check out my blood vitamin D levels from 11 years ago, 21.1. I mean, that number is so low. That puts me at risk for autoimmune diseases, cancer, all sorts of health problems. At that time in my life, I had so much inflammation, my back, my neck, my joints. Little did I know it was just low vitamin D. There's a really good chance that you personally are low in vitamin D and you might not even know it. I did my DNA test. And if you look through my genes, I have a big problem with all the inflammatory genes. If I don't do the right things or I'm eating the wrong things, my body will just fill up with inflammation. People that have genetics that are more pro-inflammatory have more of a heightened immune system and it's ready to fight things off. On the negative side, they might have a lot of chronic inflammation, more susceptibility of getting an autoimmune disease, but they're more protected against cancer. I know in my family, there's not much cancer, which is a good thing but there's a lot of inflammation. So on the flip side of that, people that take things that suppress the immune system, like prednisone or go through a lot of stress, chemotherapy, are more prone to cancer because it blunts the immune system. Let me get back to the topic. Vitamin D in your blood that they test is inactive. It is not the vitamin D that actually is doing all the work inside the cells. Some people make the assumption that, oh, my vitamin D is normal in the blood, so it must be normal in the cells. When in fact, there's another piece of the puzzle that you need to know about, and that is vitamin D resistance. Think of it like this. Here we have the receptors for vitamin D, and then we have the vitamin D. You have to add a lot of force to get it to work. That's called vitamin D resistance. How does one get vitamin D resistance? A genetic problem could be one way you have vitamin D resistance, Lyme disease, certain infections, downgrade the vitamin D receptor as a survival mechanism. If you're low in magnesium, which the majority of the population is deficient, or if you're deficient in zinc or vitamin K2, you're going to have difficulty allowing vitamin D to work because vitamin D is dependent on these other nutrients. The more cortisol that you have flowing through your bloodstream, the less vitamin D will work. The more body problems you have, whether it's diabetes or obesity, the less vitamin D will work. Even the color of your skin, if your skin's darker, you're going to have a hard time absorbing vitamin D3. Let me go on to the next interesting topic about vitamin D. That has to do with the RDAs, the amounts of vitamin D that are recommended on a daily basis to prevent problems. The recommendation of the Institute of Medicine states that we need about 600 IUs of vitamin D3. Very, very tiny amounts. That 600 IUs of vitamin D that is recommended really should be 8,895 international units every single day. The RDAs for vitamin D should be more than 10x more. Not a lot of people are doing that. They're taking like maybe like 800, 1,000, 2,000 at the very most. There's actually a lot of research in the relationship between vitamin D and your immune system. And if someone is low in vitamin D, it really puts them at risk for all sorts of problems, especially viral infections. And there's even data that people with tumors and cancer have low vitamin D. And if you understand the relationship between vitamin D and the immune system, it all makes sense. Vitamin D is involved in 10% of all of our genes. We have like 25,000 genes. One of the most exciting areas of research involving vitamin D is with autoimmune diseases. And this is very relevant because autoimmune diseases are the number one world problem right now, way above heart disease as well as cancer. There's a doctor from Brazil, Dr. Coimbra, started to treat certain patients with high doses of vitamin D3 with amazing results. I personally talked to another doctor that uses high doses of vitamin D3, and this doctor has over 900 video testimonials of autoimmune diseases relating to everything from MS to serious autoimmune skin disorders. There's an eye doctor in Germany, an ophthalmologist, who wrote a book about using high doses of vitamin D3 for glaucoma and other eye-related problems of all sorts of different autoimmune diseases. The Pharmacological Basis of Therapeutics 4th Edition talks about vitamin D resistance, which I don't know in 1972 if they recognize how common vitamin D resistance is, but back then they talked about it. The curative dosage of the vitamin D may be as high as 50,000 IUs to 500,000 I use 
every single day. Then it goes on to say that in 1940, an interesting case of rickets required a curative dosage of 1 million units, and we're recommending 600 IUs. Is that going to do anything for your immune system? I talked to the pioneer researcher, Dr. Bruce Hollis, about vitamin D3, and he told me that if you have positive, good outcomes for with vitamin D, they don't want to publish it. And I said, why? He said, because it competes with big pharma. When you have something that's so inexpensive or free from the sun, I mean, who's going to want to take the drugs if you can get it free? What about toxicity? It's not the actual vitamin D. It's what vitamin D does to calcium. Taking vitamin D actually opens the doors in the intestine to absorb more calcium. But the problem is the high levels of calcium in people that are taking very large dosages that don't have vitamin D resistance. The data that I found is that you would have to take hundreds of thousands of vitamin D3 for months to produce this calcemic situation, which is high calcium in the blood. There's all sorts of things that you can do to lower that risk. One thing that Dr. Coimbre talks about is that he just tells you not to consume any calcium and go on a low calcium diet. So that's his strategy. The problem is that when I read through some of the reviews of patients that went to see him, there was some problem with osteoporosis because when you're completely eliminating calcium, it could start affecting the bone. Other doctors who got trained from him kind of altered that protocol. And part of the recommendation is, yeah, they'll tell them not to actually take calcium from supplements, but they won't restrict it from the diet. They will recommend cheese and dairy and things like that. They also recommend taking something that regulates calcium, and that is magnesium. When you take magnesium, you offset or you decrease the risk for this. Also, if you drink two and a half liters of fluid every day, you can reduce the risk of getting kidney stones. And then if you have an autoimmune disease, you can work with a doctor to have them check your calcium in your blood. And they can also check other things like the parathyroid hormone. If you have an autoimmune disease, I do recommend that you work with a doctor. And I will put a link down below of people who got trained by Dr. Coembre. And then you can do your own research on this. I haven't interviewed these doctors. I don't know anything about them, but at least it will give you a starting point of doing your own research to figure this out. The last point I want to talk about is what would you give a child? If the child is under one year old, they should be taking a thousand IUs of vitamin D3 every day. A mother who is breastfeeding a child, this is very, very important, should be taking at least 8,000 to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Breast milk is not very high in vitamin D unless the mother is taking a good amount of vitamin D3. And when the child is over one years old, they should be taking 3,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Teenagers to young adults to adults, they should be taking between 8,000 to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day or getting it from the sun. If you have even the slightest concern that 10,000 IUs is toxic, the Institute of Medicine stated, and I will put that link down below, the intake of 10,000 IUs of vitamin D3 was supported as no observed adverse events concentration, aka there's no toxicity levels at 10,000 IUs. And this is by the Institute of Medicine, okay? I'm not just making this up. Now you know a little bit more about my problems in relationship to vitamin D and a much greater awareness on the importance of vitamin D that you're not probably going to get by doing a search on Google. Now, if you haven't seen my interview with Dr. Hollis, I'll put that up right here. Check it out.